Hello and welcome to Statesman.com in our House District 47 debate. I'm Jason Embry and I'd like to introduce our candidates. To my left is Democrat Valinda Bolton. In the middle is Libertarian Yvonne Schick. And on the end is Republican Bill Welch. I'd like to thank all of our candidates for being here today. Here are the ground rules. Each candidate will have 30 seconds for an opening statement. I'll then ask a question and each candidate will have 60 seconds to respond. I can follow up with questions after the responses. Each candidate will then have 60 seconds at the end of the debate for a closing statement. I'd like to remind viewers that this debate will be on our website through the end of the November 7th election at statesman.com backslash elections. The candidates drew for seating just a couple of minutes ago and their drawings determine the order. So uh, we will start with uh, what we deemed candidate A and that is uh, Democrat Valinda Bolton and her opening statement. Hi, thank you so much Jason and to the statesman for having us today. My name is Valinda Bolton and I'm running for House District 47. I have spent my whole entire career working to build stronger and safer communities and I want to take that activism and that experience working collaboratively and put it to work in the Texas House. I'm running to be a voice for positive change and to work hard to restore balance in the Texas legislature. I believe we've been shortchanged by short-sighted leadership. And I also believe that real leadership is about setting priorities and not partisan agendas. And I want to work hard for House District 47 and the voters and constituents to set our priorities straight. Thank you. The Libertarian candidate, Yvonne Schick. Thank you. As a Libertarian, I believe in people's rights to live their lives as they wish without government regulation as long as they don't violate the rights of others. I favor rolling back the cost and size of government, eliminating regulations that stifle the economy and control people's personal choices. I'm neither liberal nor conservative. Unlike liberals and conservatives, libertarians favor a high degree of both personal and economic freedom. So similar to conservatives, I would favor reducing taxes, eliminating bureaucratic regulations, and the use of charitable rather than government welfare. But I also agree with liberals in that we should tolerate personal choice and freedom in lifestyle and habits. Thank you. Republican Bill Welch. And, uh, and I'd like to also add in and say thank you, Jason, to you and to the American Statesman for once again hosting this podcast. I'm Bill Welch. I'm running because uh, I've lived in the district for 22 years. I've got two children that we raised in public schools in the district. I've lived in the district long enough to see our taxes rise to a point where I'm greatly concerned. I've lived there long enough to see the financing process for our education flip-flop to where now the burden is largely on our backs as homeowners. And I'm running because I think that there's so much that we can do as neighbors, uh, and me being your neighbor and representing you in the legislature, to turn things around and give us a better future for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with our first question. And uh, we, will, we will move to the candidates' lefts on the order of the questions and the answers. So we will start now with, with you, Ms. Schick. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the plan that the legislature passed in the springtime special session to reduce property taxes, increase business and cigarette taxes, and increase education spending? Well, for the most part, I agree. I believe that people's money is their own property. So taxes should be minimized, and we would minimize that by reducing the cost of government eliminating unnecessary programs and uh, reducing the size of programs. Okay, Mr. Walsh. I'm happy that we're making a move in the right direction. I think, uh, I think it's great that the burden has somewhat shifted now and it's no longer on our backs as much as it was prior to that special session. So we're moving in the right direction. There's so much more though that can be done. Uh, I think we have to take a closer look at how we spend the dollars, how we prioritize the expenditures, and uh, I want to be very much uh, to be a part of that process. Ms. Fulton? I think what happened in, in the special sessions saw a real <coughs> first-time effort at uh, reducing our overall dependence on property taxes. We created a brand new uh, tax in, in Texas covering more businesses than ever before. But I think the reality of the special session and what we saw happen was really just a bare minimum to avoid a lengthy and expensive court battle. 
and it didn't really do anything to improve Texas classrooms. Do you think, I'll follow up with you, Ms. Bolton, do you think that the legislature was correct to dedicate all of the uh, money from the tax increases, such as the new business tax and the higher cigarette tax, to dedicate that money exclusively to reducing property taxes instead of saying we're going to use some of this money for public education? Well, I'm a homeowner, and certainly I've, I've experienced firsthand the rising uh, burden of, of property taxes. But I also look at what happened in the special session and realize that it's revenue neutral. It's been determined that there is actually no new money in that for our schools. And um, I do have concerns about that, that we didn't actually create any new revenue for Texas schools. And now our focus has become more on buying down property taxes than it has been on uh, improving our schools. Uh, sort of going back here in reverse order, Mr. Welch, do you think that the legislature was correct to dedicate those new those tax increases exclusively to reducing property taxes? I do. I think it was an important measure, an important move. Uh, again, I'm greatly concerned. The, the, the burden of paying for education has been placed squarely on the backs of homeowners and, and largely on the backs of homeowners like ours. In uh, Lake Travis, 51% of every dollar collected for education goes out of the district into uh, other parts of Texas, 48% from Eanes Independent School District and millions and millions of dollars from Austin Independent School District. And this is, these are homeowner taxes that are going to do that. It is, the, it is the responsibility of the state to provide for education, the burden of providing the, uh, the dollars necessary to educate our children to the very best standard we could possibly have lies in the hands of the state and not on the backs of homeowners. And so I think it was good. We made a good move in that direction. Now let's continue the progress. Let's make education the very best that it can be. Let's make it the number one priority of Texas. Do you think we need to spend more on education? Absolutely. I think we need to spend whatever it takes to give our children the quality of education to make them the most uh, competitive in the United States so that we can draw new employers here and, and, uh, and, and have less crime and, and less difficulties uh, as children grow up. I, no, I think that uh, spending uh, extra dollars on education uh, where it's needed is an absolute must, yes. Where would that money come from if, it, if, if not from the uh, taxes that were increased to reduce property taxes? Education should be the first priority of our Texas legislature. I don't believe any other bill should be paid until the bill for education is fully paid. I think that's the most important thing. As I knock on doors and I work my way through our district, thousands of doors, the number one thing that I hear is I want a quality education for my child. But I want efficiency in the spending. I don't want you just collecting the dollars and throwing them away willy-nilly. I want to know that my dollars are best spent to give me the best quality education possible. Uh, Ms. Schick, I'd like to give you a chance to respond to the, to the same question about the, uh, whether, whether it was correct to use that new tax revenue to reduce the property taxes. Yeah. Well, and as Mr. Walsh brought up, there's a fundamental question about the quality of education, and is that a matter of funding? <coughs> In fact, government schools <coughs> excuse me, are monopolies that cost double what private schools cost. They often teach viewpoints that parents don't approve, and generally provide an inferior education. We could start with a tax credit and our voucher system for private schools that would also be supported somewhat by private funding, with the ultimate goal being a total separation of education and government. Let parents choose which schools are best for their children based on the programs offered. In terms of taxes, business taxes are actually still passed through in, term, in the cost of goods and services to the consumer. So any thought that we've eliminated an individual tax burden by transferring taxes to businesses is a myth. Okay. All right, we'll move on to our second question. And uh, for, uh, on this question, we will start with you, Mr. Welch. Uh, the legislature created the Texas Enterprise Fund in 2003 as a deal-closing account that would entice companies to relocate or expand in Texas. Companies such as Home Depot and Samsung uh, that are expanding in Austin receive money from the fund, but some say it is corporate slush, slush fund that gives away tax dollars that would be better spent on other programs. For instance, the same year that the Enterprise Fund was created, uh, the legislature was cutting uh, programs and, and or cutting spending and narrowing eligibility for some uh, health care programs. Uh, do you think that the Enterprise Fund is a good use of tax dollars? I think the Enterprise Fund is a very important concept, and I think it's been well used. <coughs> Excuse me. The um, the importance of drawing uh, 
new opportunity to Texas uh, can't be overstated. We need new business. We, we need to attract people to Texas. We're not talking about the billions of dollars that we need to run education. We're talking about the millions of dollars that we need to draw new business to Texas. New business will bring opportunity for the people of Texas. It will bring us jobs and it will bring us new tax revenue that can be used to support those things that we need paid for, such as uh, education, transportation, and all the important things we want here in Texas. Ms. Bolton? I think that really when you're looking at something like the Enterprise Fund and then you're ultimately talking about employment and workforce development, you always come back to the importance of education. In the absence of quality public schools and a well-trained, qualified workforce, who are these employers going to hire? We need to be putting every mon bit of money that we can into being sure that our schools are the best that they can be and making sure that all of our students have access to quality education. And when you talk about using the money to pay for other health care, things such as health care, I absolutely agree with that because when we have all these people in Texas that are uninsured and underinsured and we have the largest number of uninsured children in Texas, that cost of health care that's uncompensated, not paid for, gets pushed down to other consumers. It makes our health care costs go up, it makes our hospital visits more expensive, it makes our health insurance premiums more expensive. So I think that using state dollars to make sure everybody has access to health care and affordable health care would ultimately be a huge boost to our economy. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Schick. Yeah, so if the basic question was, is that a, the Texas Enterprise System a good use of tax dollars? I think that it's another form of corporate welfare. It's it's taking from you know one taxpayer to support you know a business, and while business is good, we want economic growth. I think that there's more fundamental factors. Texas has always had a strong and growing economy. I think we can be very proud of that. I think part of what has accomplished that is that we have some of the lowest tax rates of any state in the country, and I think that if we lessen the burden of regulation, we will attract more businesses to Texas. Okay, uh, we'll move on to question three, and I believe uh, it's, it's back to, to Ms. Bolton. And, and question three is a little more open-ended for our candidates. Uh, what distinguishes you from the other candidates in the race? I have a long history of working to build stronger and safer communities, as I mentioned. I have um, the experience tackling tough issues and asking tough questions and, and working collaboratively to build bridges to find solutions. I am a mom. I have a student, a, a son who is a student in public school right now in the district. Um, I am very much uh, aware of the pressures and concerns facing our public schools. I've been a um, lived in Texas all my life. My family has been in Texas for many, many generations. In fact, I'm a descendant of General Sam Houston, so I think I'm very much aware of the issues and concerns that uh, are facing Texas families and families in this district and uh, the needs and, and pressures on Texas families and also what their joys and hopes are for their, for their families. And I think I bring that experience and that commitment and put that to work hard to restore balance in our Texas legislature to get us past a point where things are so out of whack under the current one party leadership. Okay, thank you. Ms. Schick. Yes, and uh, similarly I think the thing that would distinguish me is uh, as a libertarian there would be uh, a lack of party pressure if you will or party alliances um, not participating in that system, you know, would be external to it. Um, I think the fact that uh, I'm not a political professional would mean that I would bring a man in the street viewpoint, if you will, to uh, the decisions that I made. I would always uh, make my decisions based on, you know, first is the program, activity, project that we're looking at really a function of government? Is it something that uh, the state needs to be doing? Or is this an activity, project, or program that would be better left to uh, private enterprise or private foundations? Okay, thank you. Mr. Walsh. And uh, <clears throat> I, I'm proud that I've lived in the district for 22 years. Uh, I've had three homes in the district, uh, my wife and I, and 
Uh, we've had three homes in the district because we love it here, and that's where we want to live, and uh, that's where we work, and that's where we go to church, and that's where our children went to school. Uh, my boys, they went to Boone Elementary down in the south central part of town at first, and then over to Menchaca Elementary, from there to Bailey Middle School, and uh, Ben went to Austin High, that's where the track came for him, and then they built the new Aikens High, as my son Michael was in the first class to completely uh, complete all four years at uh, Aikens. Uh, the community means so much to me. You go from one end of the district where I live in Onion Creek all the way to Spicewood and Briarcliff and anything in between, and you knock on a door and the person that answers the door is someone just like myself or my wife, and I think that I'll do a wonderful job. I promise I'll do the best I can representing you in the Texas legislature. Okay, not much need to follow up there, so we will uh, head on to question four. We'll start with Ms. Schick. Uh, question four, should, should state money be allowed to go toward embryonic stem cell research, and if not, should Texas do anything to loosen restrictions on this type of research? Um, I don't think that um, government money should be spent on that type of research. I think that, that uh, this is an example of a use of, of tax dollars, and, and I want to say not for any moral reason but uh, because it's a use of tax dollars that's better left to private enterprise, private foundations uh, to, fund, uh, to fund medical research. Okay, Mr. Welch. Uh, no, I will not support the use of state funds for embryonic research. Do you think Texas right now is, is fairly strict in terms of uh, how it allows its institutions to uh, perform, perform stem cell research? Do you think that there should be uh, any, any loosening of those restrictions? Uh, no, I don't. I, I'm not, uh, I, I can't say that I would uh, want a loosening of the restrictions, no. Okay. Ms. Bolton? I think that this is one area of research where Texas could be in the lead, where we could have world-class uh, research and institutions going on, which is something that our uh, major colleges and universities have talked about as a desire of theirs. I think this is an area where we could be doing research that would bring uh, so much hope and healing uh, to so many um, people and their families, and I think it's an area where we could decrease a lot of suffering um, that people are, are experiencing. And so I would like to see us be more on the cutting edge and more involved in um, this kind of research. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, let's see, Mr. Welch, I believe, is your chance to go first? Uh, your, your turn, rather? I think so. Question number five. Students who graduate in the top 10% of their class are now guaranteed a spot at public universities in Texas. Is this, correct, is this the correct policy for our state? And if not, how should it be changed? Um, I'm not sure that it is anymore. I, I admire the effort that was put forth to say, let's try to better diversify our higher education uh, institutions. And uh, I'm not sure that it's working anymore. I've, I've received uh, input from uh, leaders at, a, at various universities around the state that say that they'd like to revisit this and, and find a better way of doing it. I support that. Let's take a look and see. Let's, let's find the right way of getting a really properly diversified opportunity for every child in Texas to go to one of our great state universities. And so let's take a look. Ms. Bolton? I do think that the top 10% rule, as it's called, has opened up the possibility of major uh, university to so many students who might not have otherwise had that opportunity. But it is coming with some unintended consequences. And I, I do think that we need to look at um, making sure that all of our students who are are qualified and ready to go have the opportunity to attend one of our major universities. I'm concerned about the fact that some students whose skills and expertise and talents lie in the arts or humanities might not have that academic record that puts them in the top 10 percent. I'm also concerned because it comes back to the whole issue of adequate state funding and state support for all Texas public schools. Not all of our students are coming out with the same level of readiness and capacity to attend our, our major universities. And I think we've really got to make sure that all of our kids come out of high school ready for college and university. Okay, thank you, Ms. Schick. Yes, um, so I agree that it has probably outlived its usefulness. 
that um, the university should be able to set their criteria, that the best students, uh, regardless of where they are competitively in a small unit, the best units across the best students across the state should have that opportunity. And I think it is one that's earned through hard work. Um, that if the universities want to diversify and be sure that they get some that are, um, for example, skilled in the arts, that, that they should be able to make that determination on their own. Okay. And we'll move on, and uh, we'll start again with uh, Ms. Bolton. Question six. Would you support giving local governments the option of charging an extra tax on gas if it allowed them to build and work on roads more quickly? I think there is... Um, some value in considering a, a local options tax. I think we're experiencing that in Travis County to as great a degree as anybody. The pressure on uh, for new roads and the, and um, the traffic and congestion on our highways. I am adamantly opposed to tolling any of our existing roads or any roads that have already been paid for. And I think if a local options tax would make it possible for for cities and counties that are experiencing a great deal of pressure on growth and development and experiencing more and ever growing congestion um, ought to be able to uh, look at having some local control over how to pay for uh, much needed roads and highways. Okay, Ms. Schick? Yes, I agree. Local control, um, local option voted by the citizens that uh, they could determine if they wanted to add a temporary uh, tax to improve road conditions and, and road construction would be appropriate. Okay. Mr. Welch. And I have to go back to say that I'm greatly concerned about the level of taxation we're already at, and now we're going to place an additional burden on a small segment of a population, and uh, I'm not sure that, that that's the right thing to do. Uh, we certainly want to consider any alternative we can find to reasonably uh, pay for roads, but I think that comes in the form of prioritization. I will agree one thing for sure. I think that the it is very important that we recognize that tolls on existing roadways are an unacceptable option. And uh, I, I think there's unanimity here when it comes to that. That's good, because that is a very, very important issue in our district. Um, the uh, uh, alternative to, or, or the paying of gas tax, one of the problems with gas tax is that as you move, if we were to create a gas tax in the southern part of Travis County, would it drive everybody up to buy their gas in the northern part of uh, Travis County? And would we be hurting the small businesses that are out there trying to uh, operate? I'm just not sure how it would be properly implemented. And so uh, my, my uh, inclination is to say, no, I don't support it. And I certainly uh, am greatly concerned about any kind of new taxes. I want to find a better way to spend the existing dollars. But do you support uh, more spending on, on transportation? Absolutely. I think that transportation is one of the three top priorities in this state. Education being number one, without question. And, and, and uh, 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 public safety is one that, that continues to come up, but transportation is right there. And in our district in particular, uh, we have dire needs for improvements at the Y and Oak Hill, for the uh, completion of uh, SH-45 across the southern part of Travis County, the completion of the roadways over uh, Ben White at I-35. The only area that that roadway does not serve is southern Travis County. I think that's wrong, and I think we need to get that turned around. We need more dollars for our roads in southern Travis County. So you, you've called for more spending on education and for transportation, but sort of talked against uh, tax increases. Uh, where, where, where would the money for these, these programs come from? Well, I, I mean, we're looking at a, a state revenues of uh, $140 billion biannual revenues, $70 billion a year. Um, the, the three priorities I just talked about cost far less than $70 billion. And so if those were paid for, we'd be arguing about something a whole lot less uh, important. Uh, so I think that we need to, to really focus our priorities where they have to be, and that's on the top priorities of our, of our state and our district. Would, would you look to health and human services programs, though, which, which uh, have some entitlement programs where, where uh, the, st the state has to cover uh, for, and Medicaid, for instance, uh, those, those are ever-growing costs. Is that... Is that where you where you turn for this uh, prioritization? No, I, I think that again we have to uh, line up what the what the key priorities are. Education number one, absolutely ought to be paid for without question. Transportation, huge huge issue in our district. It ought to be in my book number two. Um, public safety, we cannot afford to, to uh, compromise on public safety. Then as you get down, human health and human services, very important. 
uh, I think that you still get to a point where you get all those things and you still uh, have ample dollars left over to do things that Texas needs to do as well. Other, other. I'd like to give the other two of you, uh, I guess starting with Ms. Bolton, the, the uh, opportunity also to speak about uh, where, where money should, should come from for, for programs such as uh, education uh, and, and transportation and, uh, and whether, you, whether you believe that, there is, uh, that it, can, it can be found within the current state budget. You know, Texas does have a, a thriving and growing economy. I've read that if we were our own country, we would have the eighth largest economy in the world. But we are at the absolute bottom in the United States on per capita spending in Texas on state government. So there is hope that we can um, in increase that and improve that with the new business tax. As we talked about before, I think that is a, a, a brand new thing in Texas that we've never had before that opens up some great new possibilities for supporting important uh, state infrastructure and state services. And we need to make it possible that that is, um, that that is revenue that can go into paying um, for other state services and not just be revenue neutral only used to pay for property taxes. I, I don't think that most people in, in this district or, or most people in Texas are proud of the fact that we rank at the very bottom on most measures of quality of life when it comes to how we treat our elderly, how we care for our children, um, how we deal with important public safety issues like um, uh, in, in prisons and jails, um, I, I don't think that those are things that, that people are, are proud of and that that's where they really want to envision Texas being in the future. Okay, thank you. Ms. Schick? Uh, Ms. Bolton touched on an important point there. She said that Texas has this huge thriving economy, one of the, if we were a country, it would be one of the largest in the world, and yet we have lower spending. Maybe there's actually... Uh, not a negative connection between those two things, but a positive one instead. Maybe that's part of what makes Texas a, a thri the thriving economy as it is, is that we have restrained ourselves, you know, from spending in some of these areas, which leads to a greater, greater tax burden of taxation. I think that there are many programs that could be reduced or eliminated. There are uh, examples of regulation where the state regulates businesses that could be regulated by a private uh, group, an industry group, for example. Um, and I'll just take one like um, the beauty business, for example, salons and that sort of thing. Rather than having a state agency that inspects those and regulates those, uh, there could be a private organization. And you only go into a salon that has the seal of approval. You know, we've been approved by the Texas Association of blah, blah, blah. So the consumer's got a protection factor. They know that somebody's looking to see you know, is this group, is this business meeting certain standards, but it's supported through private dollars, private enterprise, not state. And um, I think we've seen over and over again that any function that is run by the state becomes more expensive, more burdensome than one that's run by private enterprise. So I think we could go through, you know, a standard uh, libertarian position on victimless crimes. If you take victimless crimes off of, off of um, uh, the regular, off of the laws, and you can release from prison, then you can have better quality prisons for those people who really ought to be there rather than those who are really no danger to society. Okay, and, and uh, uh, it was not, nodding my head a little bit just to, just to help you wrap up there. And, okay, and, and thank you. Uh, thank you for, 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 to all of you for your, for your follow-up response there. That gets us through our questions. Now we will uh, s begin with our closing statements, and uh, each candidate will have 60 seconds. We'll work back this way in reverse order of our opening statement, so we'll begin with Republican Bill Welch. Well, I'd like to again say uh, thank you to the American statesman and Jason for the job you did here. Um, this is a really important election, and, and it's very important for, for a variety of reasons. And, and one of the big reasons it's important is that uh, we're going to tackle some enormous issues in the coming years in the Texas legislature. And, and the way we want to tackle those is in a proper prioritization in other words, making education number one. Uh, if, if that's what you believe in, that's what I believe in, that's what I hear as I walk through the district that, that we want to make sure of, then I'd like your vote so I can get in and fight for education as our first priority. 
If you're also concerned, though, that the burden of providing for that education is unfairly placed on your back, then uh, once again, I need your vote, because I, I likewise feel that that's very much the case. 22 years I've lived with you in District 47. Uh, my children, again, have gone to school there. They're down at Texas State University now doing wonderfully, and we're real proud of them and great young men. Um, we can have so much more for our children in the future if we'll just put the priority on education, keep the taxes off our backs so we can have new business, new homes, and, and continue to flourish as families, and we'll all do just fine. So I ask again for your vote in, in November. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Libertarian Yvonne Schick. Right. And I, too, want to thank you for this opportunity and for including the Libertarian Party in this debate. Uh, we're, we're often excluded, and I think it's important for people to know that there are options beyond the two major political parties. I'm not a political professional. I'm a simple citizen. I have no commitments to any special interests, advocacy groups, or political alliances. I would be free to simply vote my conscience on each issue. My objectives would be to free the individual from the burden of taxation, to free businesses from overregulation, and to return the individual personal responsibility for his own choices. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the, and the Democrat, Valinda Bolton. And thanks again. This has been a great experience, and I really appreciate your efforts to bring us all together. I am asking for your vote on November 7th because this is a critical election in terms of issues and opportunity facing our district and the entire state of Texas. We need to restore balance to the Texas legislature. We need independent voices, independent leaders who can t ask tough questions and tackle tough issues. And we need to get our priorities straight so that we don't continue to be shortchanged by short-sighted leadership. When we make proper investments in our, our state, then we save money in the long run. When we put our proper investment and our money into schools, we are ensuring the future economic prosperity of all of us, us, our children, and our grandchildren. When we invest in health care for all citizens of Texas, those who can afford it and those who can't, then we save money and we invest in the future of all of us. I think that I have the experience and the involvement in the community and in the district to, to represent you and to, to be a voice for all of the people and families of District 47. I have a, a child at, the, uh, at small middle school. I'm involved in my community. I've enjoyed all the opportunities to get out and, and meet voters and meet people in the district. And I think that I can be a voice for uh, the people of House District 47. Okay, thank you. Thank you to all, your, thank you to all of our candidates for, for being here today and for participating. Congratulations to all of you for making it through this. And we'd like to remind you that this debate will remain on statesman.com backslash elections until November 7th. So uh, tell your friends and neighbors to watch it. And thanks for tuning in.